that. Welcome. Welcome to the Father's house. Good morning. It's great to see everybody. How's everybody doing this morning? Woo! Wonderful day to be alive. Amen. Yes. Let's please stand and worship God. You know what? So, such a good day to be here. Amen. Why we, we got an opportunity? If you didn't get a chance to say good morning to someone, say it right now. As we get everything to more. Good morning. Jeff, her um, keyboard is not in the house. And the, my mic, check one, two. We're just... It's okay. There we go. We just got some. Anybody ever have technical difficulties? That's are, are we the only ones that have those now and then? Oh, that's so good to be in the house of the Lord. Yes, Welcome yes, to our Facebook yes. family. I have got so many friends that are watching by Facebook or YouTube today. Thank you. You are part of the Father's House family. We love to start with something traditional now and then. So would you please lift your voice and let's sing the doxology together, okay? As we bless the Lord at the beginning of this service. house but it's gonna be a song you fall in love with <laughs> Cherith lead us into the presence of the Lord Battle you've won, and I am 
surrounded by you. <laughs> it may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Surrounded by heavenly armies. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Well, this is how I fight my This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my like the drums that's the march of the army of the lord yes. and we thank you god the god of the lord army the lord's armies god you are the one we call this virus canceled in yes. jesus name Hallelujah. this is how we fight our battles yes. we use our mouth to proclaim the miracle yes. that god has we call every home covered yes. covered in the name and blood of jesus no shall come near your home according to Psalm 9110 yes. no plague shall come near your home declare that for yourself put your hand on your own body say it right there at home no plague shall come near this temple no one's coming near me and I want to pray right now on the other side of this lens is Rev Rev is my friend he's one of our teachers one of our pastors here Rev is in the hospital today, and he's having a tough time. He went through a 12-hour cancer surgery a couple of days ago. And so, Rev, I'm looking at you. And you can't see all these people here, but I want you to know you're going to come off of that sick bed. Yeah. You're going to come up off that sick bed. God's healing you right now. Right now, God's healing you. Yes. God is healing you. Yes. Putting back all the parts together again. Yes. God is healing you. You will live and not die. Yes. Enemy be gone in Jesus' name. Cancer be gone in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I told the team earlier in the 815 service. Y'all know we have an 815 service now. Anybody know that? Well, it just happened. All kinds of stuff. Just stick around and you'll get used to the speed at which we're moving. I don't care if culture says go that way. I'm going this way with God. Yeah. We're, we're growing. We're going with God like never before. Yes. We're not shutting up. We're not sitting down. We yeah. are standing up. We're shouting up. We've got joy in the house. Yes. Joy, joy. There's a sign up in my mom and dad's house. Still at the farm today where LJ is. It says joy is the most infallible sign of the presence of God. And I don't care if you're wearing a mask, you can still have joy behind that mask. Amen. Amen. I don't care who's persecuting you, accusing you, hurting you, a coming against you. God is bigger and the devil is on the run. You got to you. Did you hear those words Cherith sang? Out of my mouth is the miracle. And I told these kids in the first service, they're all my kids, by the way. I call them all kids because they're all younger than me. I 
I said, there's a healing anointing in the house today. I felt it last night driving home. I felt it and we prayed for people. So right now, if you are sick in your body and you need God to touch you, heal you of something, I want you to come down right now. Right now. Get out of your place. Come, 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 come. Come, come, come. We're going to pray for you. Our worship team's going to pray for you. Our pastors are going to pray for you. Come. Because there's healing in the house. Say it with me. There's healing in the house. There's healing in the house. And I want you to receive your healing today. Rev, you're receiving your healing today. You will live and not die. Our pastors are, come on, come on. You pray for my beautiful friend right there. You pray for her. You pray for her. And the rest of you, we're going to sing, but you add your faith. Come, come. You need a touch from God. Come right now. There's healing in the house. We declare it. I declare it for you at home. You watching my Facebook and YouTube today. Wherever you're sick, you just lay hands on your own body. Receive the healing of the Lord today. Receive his power today. Receive his blessing today. Receive peace for your mind today. Receive joy in your heart today. Let joy rise up in your heart today. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Blessing, 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 glory, 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 glory. Look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. I'm just going to pray over everybody here. Lord, we just pray right now that your Holy Spirit would fall yes. and it would rain down on this place. Lord, I pray that it would continue to move with power, Lord, that there would be healing in his name. There's power in his name. There's like mighty rivers would flow through this place. I pray that every wall would come down, Lord, like the walls of Jericho, Lord, that every wall would um, come down. I pray for breakthrough over people's life. I pray for deliverance, Lord, over anybody that needs deliverance. And I just pray that it would be mighty, mighty in this place. I just pray continually, Lord, that you continue just to move and move and move in the name of Jesus. Amen. stay in worship here. I'm really hot. Is it hot in this building or is it just me? Yes. Is it hot in here? Can yes. you please turn it down and get some air rocking? I, 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 
I, I don't want to have anything to do with hell, even here right now. At hot, no, no, no. We're, we're, we, we, we all pay for air conditioning. Let's use it. Let's use it. Let's use it. Hey, we're going to go back to sing that song we started with Champion. I just feel the Lord's anointing on this. Okay, now listen. Here's the, here's the problem. Cheryl, would you put those lyrics on the screen? The, the lyrics for Champion. Good. And uh, go to the next screen. Next screen. Oh, next screen. Oh, here it is. <laughs> hey, hey, I don't have to be a brain surgeon to figure this out. What? When I lift my voice and shout, what are you going to do? <laughs> Brilliant. I pastor the finest, smartest people in all the Twin Cities. So when Cherith and the worship team, you can stop singing that line, all of you and all of you at home, because guess what you're going to do? When I lift my voice and shout, every wall comes crashing. You shout that whole time. Right? And then, then you can sing with us, I have the authority Jesus has given me. And then guess what? We're going to do it again. When I open up my mouth, miracles start breaking out. Yeah. I want you to shout again. Yeah. Come on. We are victorious because of the name and blood of Jesus. Yes. Yes. And today, I was reminded last night, went to a phenomenal meeting of Roberts Lairdon, and I was reminded by Roberts Lairdon. He'll be back here with us one day soon. He loves the Father's house, too, on the north side of town. But listen, I was reminded by Roberts. Listen, he said, I think there needs to be a revelation of praise that comes back in the body of Christ. He said, we're understanding worship. Worship is worship. We're adoring God for who he is. We're ascribing him worth. But it, Praise is what breaks through. Praise. Praise in the house. That victory shout of God that says, greater is he that is in me. I reject any spirit of fear. No fear over here. Come on, say it with me. No fear over here. Get ready because that's my next book. My first one's about to come out. My next book's going to be No Fear Over Here. I'm writing the book. Because it's a position of victory. Yes. It's a shout. you got to get that shout in your belly. Otherwise, you're going to just whittle away on your sofa, on your lazy boy, getting no breakthrough, getting no victory, getting no joy. There's joy in the house today. Somebody shout amen. 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 All right, we're going to sing it again. And when we get to that part, y'all know what to do. Come on. <laughs> Just worship him. Just praise him. We praise you, Lord.
used to shouting in church. <laughs> Some of you same people go to a baseball game, a basketball game. You'll scream for days. And I tell you to shout for victory in the house of God, and you sound like a little church mouse. Ah! Ah! Don't even open up your mouth. Jay, you got your hands over your ears. You know how to shout. Mom, is my right? Does he know how to shout? Oh, yeah, he does. Okay, so what's up? <laughs> Just lift up your hands. Father, we thank you for the victory. We've already been to church. I can go home right now. We can all go home and go, we've been in God's house. Thank you, Lord, for the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we acknowledge you. We honor you. We love you. We thank you. Thank you that this is a charismatic church. We believe in healing. We believe in speaking in tongues. We believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We believe in the power of God. Not just the salvation power, but power to live here. In the here and now. In victory. And all God's people said a loud. All God's people said a loud. Amen. You may be seated. Go ahead. Good morning. Good morning. Hi. Check, check. Okay. Y'all got my workout for the Woo. week, maybe. Yeah, that's, that's getting it. Y'all work is not playing. If you're looking for an exercise routine that is fun and also honors God, enter into some deep worship like that a couple hours a week. You seriously. can join the worship team. You'll lose about 1,500 calories every service. It's great. Praise God. I know you can't tell by looking at us, but it's coming. It's, it's coming. coming. <laughs> it's coming. <laughs> Speaking by faith, amen? All right. Man, I am so, so glad to be here this morning. Who is excited about being in the house of God? Man, I feel the Holy Spirit. It's so good. Man, for those of you who are watching online, thank you for being with us this morning. And if, uh, if we have anybody who is new here today, uh, maybe you're here in, in, the, in the church this morning, or maybe you're watching online. If you're new here online, if you would just type in the comments, I am new, all in caps so we can see. Uh, and, uh, and we'll put a link there for you. 
for a connection, it's for a connection card that yeah. you can go and fill out. Uh, for those of you that are here in the church service who's, who may be actually new here, there's a connection card in the seat in front of you just down below. You yeah. can grab that, fill that out for us, and then take it to the Welcome Center after we're done in here this morning. Uh, Grace will be there. She can take that and, and, uh, <clears throat> and get that from you. So uh, Yeah, we just want to say also take a minute to say thank you to everyone who came to Ruby's Pantry yesterday and Woo! volunteered. Praise God. We were able to bless and serve over 200 families yesterday. Yeah, so come on. So thank you. It takes a village to serve that many families. So we just want to acknowledge and thank each and every one of you that came out either before Ruby's Pantry to get the sanctuary ready, who came to Ruby's Pantry to help us load the groceries. We are so grateful for you. You are so necessary. You are being the hands and feet of Jesus. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, uh, for those of you who are noticing I'm wearing the same shirt I wore last week, I promise it's clean. I did this on purpose. Uh, it's as an example of what we're selling in the lobby. These are some shirts we had left over from our conference and all the, uh, the proceeds go to the youth so that we can keep doing more conferences, more events and things. We had five salvations at our youth Woo! conference. Come on, Jesus. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. That's what it's all about. Yeah. And so uh, thank you all for everyone who, who served and helped and made that uh, that possible you can you can purchase one of these for just 10 bucks and that's basically the the cost of the shirt for the most part so uh so thank you guys we love you and pastor londa thank has you. some great news about giving time i do i do i do have good news your students already left we release all the kids if there's any kids here miss casey and miss rachel pastor rachel they're waiting for you so all the kids can go over to kids church right now thank you we had a couple uh somebody else said they were going to help in kids church this last week let me tell you what how that moves a pastor's heart our kids and our babies and our youth deserve the very best and I want to say thank you. If any of you are willing to rock a baby in a nursery or play with toddlers or teach them songs, and we help with all the lesson planning, but we sure need, because our, our kids stuff, we're, we're growing. We're busting out of there. I don't know. We got to do something. We have to give them some other rooms. But we need helpers because our kids need to be safe and good, and they deserve our best. So thank you for that. Hey, I got a question for you. We're, we, we just worship the Lord through singing. Now we're getting ready to worship the Lord through giving. And then after that, I'm going to worship the Lord through the spoken word. So let me ask you a question. It's a crazy time we're living in. How many of you tithed in 2019? Okay, don't raise your hand now because now, now some people are going to not. No, so let me tell you this. Just, just, I'm going to ask the question, but just nod at me. You don't have to raise your hand. How many tithed this past January? Mm -hmm. How many tithed in February? How many tithed in March? How many tithed in April? Good. If you say good to that, if you say yes to that, let me tell you what you just did. You just sealed the covenant with God to claim his financial security and blessing in your family. When you do your part, God always does his part. It's always amazing to me. You, you understand I'm a pastor and I like to just take a second and teach on giving every week because Jesus taught a lot about giving. The reason is because our nature is one of, mm, don't talk about that. You want to silence a room quick, start talking about money or sex. You'll empty the place. Typically one of those as a pastor. And I like to talk about both. Because they're both created by God for, the, for wonderful things. But not together. <laughs> There's just a bunch I want to say about that. And I'm going to choose wisely to, to keep my mouth shut. Now listen. Listen. People talk to me all the time, man, I'm hurting, Londa, I can't pay my bills, and will you pray with me? And I say, yes, I will absolutely pray for you, but first I need you to answer me a question. Have you been tithing? And almost always the answer is no. I can't afford to. And I'll, I, I, I always say, out of love, I'll be happy to pray with you, but 
see, my prayer isn't going to go any higher than that black tile. Because it's not my prayer that's going to get God's blessing on your finances. It's your obedience to tithe. That is what gains access to God's blessing in your life. I want you to be blessed. I am so thankful through this crazy pandemic, through all of this mess, the father's house has never missed a bill on time. We have, because of your generosity, because of your giving, because of your faithfulness to the Lord, we've continued to give to our missionaries, continued every single dime. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And why am I sure standing here today that God is going to keep blessing Brent and my finances and our church because the word says it and because I can claim that covenant promise. Yes. So I'm speaking to, thank you for your faithful tithing. I'm speaking specifically today to those watching and those here who are struggling financially. The way to break through to victory is to obey God. Amen. It's going to happen. There's laws of the kingdom. It's going to happen. So there's many ways to give. If you're here, you have an offering envelope in front of you. You can give online. Brent and I give through the app. It's so easy. Set up reoccurring giving. Give through Venmo or cash pay. But obey God, especially in this moment. The ministry must go forth. We must continue to go and grow in Jesus' name. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your blessing on our lives that is always there when we do our part. We thank you. I thank you for the generosity and the faithfulness of the Father's house family that we continue to reach out, to grow, and to multiply in the name of Jesus. We all say amen. 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 Hey, I want to give you a quote before I bring the word. I like good news. How about you? I like good news. We have this thing going on called the Beautiful Feet Shoe Giveaway. And several weeks ago, when our team met together, we said, God, what would you have us reach for? And I just instantly in my heart, I said, I have a faith goal of being able to give away a hundred pairs of new tennis shoes. Name brand tennis shoes, a hundred pair. Wow. And Kelly, she's, uh, she's our ministry project director here at the Father's House. She came up to me this morning and she had these forms in her hand. She goes, Londa, we just went over the goal. We're going to be giving away over a hundred pairs of shoes to a hundred kids. That's you. That's your generosity. Praise the Lord. So I'm going to need you. I need a lot of you to help me because each kid comes and gets, they don't just grab a box of shoes and leave. Oh no. Team Hollywood is coming from Illinois. They're going to be doing a show outside. Lord willing, we'll be outside Saturday, the 29th from one till three. So I need volunteers to help do the giving and the blessing and the praying because every kid, Brent and I will be taking their shoes off, putting that brand new pair of shoes on them and praying over that child for a great year, blessing their beautiful feet to be ministers of the gospel. And I need, I need a lot of people because it's a hundred. I can't do a hundred. So if you would be willing, please see Kelly or Grace at the Welcome Center after this service, if you're willing to help serve on that day, because I would love you to be a part of that blessing. Wait till you see the looks on their faces. Yes, sir. Souls for their souls. Thank you, Joe. You're absolutely right. Souls for their souls. I love that. So that's really, really a good report. And uh, next, next, this coming Sunday, I, we're going to do something really fun. Uh, it is, we are sending, listen to me, we are sending, Pastor Brenda, come up here with me. I know, you're, I know your hubby's out of town this weekend. We're sending Pastor Brenda and Pastor Scott to Bismarck, North Dakota yeah. to plant a father's house, Bismarck. And tell me, how's it going? Just tell everybody, because this is like your last week, and next Sunday is going to be your last Sunday here. Yes, yes. Well, it's, of course, very emotional because well, there's a lot of people to say farewell, and I say farewell because we'll be going back and forth. We are still connected. Instead of being a, a feel like, instead of picking up this little group and dropping them over here, we are just yes. expanding to the territory, to the left and to the right. 
still connected. Connected, still connected. And so it is sister. both, it's very joyful. It's like drinking from a fire hose and all the preparations and all the many details of selling our house. Um, our son and daughter-in-law are also selling their house and they'll be going. Um, so there's a lot of details. And, and then the ministry of, of the prayer ministering and, and the prayer ministry of Gateway and putting that into the hands of the prayer people of the Twin Cities. And this Thursday, I want to invite you, if you're a prayer warrior or anyone who wants to come on Thursday as well from 1 to 3 here at the Father's House, we'll have a special two hours of prayer and a send-off from the Fathers and the Prayer Warriors of the City for Scott and I to go, which is really exciting and fun. So as much as you are our family, in these two years we've been together has been has been such a powerful, miraculous thing, and it will continue to be just the joy of our heart to be with you, and we know we'll continue to have that joy as you speak in our lives through prayer, and we demonstrate in a different place. Amen. We're, we're going to have to get ourselves a bus and, uh, and come up and yes, bring, bring yes, some yes, of us up yes, to, yes. to church at the Father's House, Bismarck, one day soon. What do y'all think? <laughs> Uh huh. It's going to happen. Amen. So stay right here just for a second. So next Sunday, uh, Brenda doesn't know this. I said it in the first service. But next Sunday, we're going to have a little send-off party for them after both of the services. So I would invite you, and this is me talking now. So right after the 8.15, you can come early, or if you want to come to 10, then stay late. After both, uh, our hospitality team is going to have a little send-off party. But words mean a lot to Scott and Brenda. Mm -hmm. the, they are they're. They work in prophecy so much. They write down what the Lord is saying. And I, I know the thing that's going to bless them more than anything. Don't get a little card and just say, oh, we'll miss you. No, I want you to write some stuff down. I want you to write down some paragraphs of how these two have impacted your life. I better get going on mine this afternoon because I might have a few pages. I might have a few pages. There are no finer people in the world than Scott and Brenda Kilber. And we're so blessed and we're staying together. We're going to be talking probably more than you even want to. And we're a team and we're going to be just reaching out. God is expanding this, this house. And we were just praying in the prayer room before church today about God already has a coalition of people. And we just were calling in those spiritual orphans in Bismarck. Amen. There's a real religious spirit there, if you know what I mean. And, and people that just aren't even going to church, not connected anywhere. We've been calling them in, calling them home. So next Sunday, don't miss. We want to send them off with a blast and with a big love from all of us. So let's give it, them a big hand. We love you so much, Brenda. All right, stand to your feet for 30 seconds. You've been sitting too long already. Just 30 seconds. Just shake it off, shake it off. At home there, come on, do a little... You know, rolling of the neck, little stretching, because we're going to go hard now. We're going to go hard here. I promise to let you out by 1 o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> no. No, but see, I'm going I'm to preach strong, and I need you to listen strong. Do you know what that means? Yeah. Don't, don't just listen to me. Engage with the Holy Spirit in this word today. Right. Engage with the word of God today. That's different than passive. So you can go to church all day long and be a passive sitter. A consumer, a taker. But even as I'm praying, be praying for me as I preach. Because I need the same word. Be praying. Be engaged. Sit on the front of your chair. Take note. Be praying for yourself and for me. Because the living word of God is active. And today, it's going to activate you. Did you come to church expecting God to do something great? Then you're going to get it. You're already standing. So we might as well read the word of God together. My message today is called, what is it called? Supernatural solutions. Let's say that together. Supernatural solutions. Say that whole screen. What does the word say about supernatural solutions? Good. Now let's read from my text, Jeremiah 33, 3. I encourage you to memorize this verse. It's simple. It's short and it'll serve you well. Let's say it together. Call to me, and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. Hold up your Bibles, your phones. Let's do our faith declaration together. I've got a grip on this life-changing, living Word of God. There are 8,810 promises in this book, and every one of them is for me. Amen. You may be seated. 
So let me ask you a question. Who is the church? We Your answer is I am. Let's try it again. Who is the church? I am. Who is an active full-time duty as an active soldier of God in the Lord's army? I am. That's it. In case you forgot this morning when you woke up. <laughs> Just wanted to remind you who you are. Lots of people are going to tell you what to do and who you are. Yep. Don't listen to them. Sometimes I don't even want you to listen to you because you're making yourself confused. Listen to God. Listen to his word. God says you're a soldier. God says you are called. God says you are enough. God says you are worth it. God says you are my army. Amen. Amen. I like solutions. I like things that work. The people who make this pulpit, I believe this company is, is, is based in Australia. Somebody does this pulpit that solved my problem. I wanted a pulpit wide enough, deep enough with the lip. I, I needed the right. It, it works. It solved a problem for me and a bunch of other preachers who had the same one. This keyboard stand. It's, it's called an ultimate support stand, as opposed to the kind of stand that does not ultimately support. <laughs> I've had some of those stands, right, Adam? Those freebies and those ones, you know, no, no, no. No, no, see, this, this is a good stand. It, it works. It, it gives a solution to me needing good support for these two keyboards. I like things that work. I like solutions. I like people who find solutions. I listened to a leadership podcast and I brought it to my staff. And so we kind of have this in our staff. I think you should use it too. We call each other a CPS. Do you know what a CPS is? You can go ahead and put this after your name on all of your documents now. Make people wonder what it is. Sometimes I don't know what half all those letters mean, but go ahead and use this. Put your name, Dr. Doran McKnight. You already got the doctor on the front. Add some at the back. CPS, Chief Problem Solver. <laughs> I like people who go, well, yeah, I, that's a challenge. Let, let me take care of that. Right here, PJ, Pastor, Pastor John. I call him PJ. We got too many Johns in the church already. So we don't get to be called Johnny's PJ. I like PJ because when he entered the scene, he goes, hey, what do you need done? I'll fix it. I'll take care of it. Instantly became a CPS for me. See problem? Fix it. I like people who solve problems. I like solutions. I like answers. I like God. Because everything I need to know about life, being a good wife, being a mama, being a good leader to you, being a pastor is found in this book. I like solutions that work. I like things that work and I like people that... I'm broken and flawed just like you are. But see, when I, when I get this little thing in my head, when I get his word in my mind, my thoughts renewed, Romans 12, 2, when my mind, I start thinking like God. And you know what? God doesn't have any problems. God does not worried about this pandemic. Hey, this thing's going to come and go, and then another one's going to come and go. Why? Because the Bible says there'll be plagues and stuff like this till Jesus comes. So, like, stop freaking out. Live your life. Be happy. Wear a mask if you need to. Be happy. Be joyful. I like things that work. And I like people that get a hold of God's promises that work. I have three points from this text, very simple text today. You notice on your notes, I don't have many write-ins. I wanted to leave a little space so I could go off on my la-la lands on the side. Because if I put too many notes on there, I got to like, I got to get through them. Because are you like me? You know what ticks me off? Let me tell you what ticks me off. Some of you have called me because I forgot to give the last write-in. 
Some of you have texted me after church. Hey, Londa, you forgot the last point. Doesn't it drive you crazy? When a preacher goes, well, I got, this is four points and they only make it through two. You feel like, ah. Uh. I'm a little OCD like that. Like, okay, if this is what it is and let, let's get her done. Let's get through it. So I left plenty of margin today because I knew God wants to activate something in you. God wants to get your head right, your thoughts right, so that your behavior and your actions can be right and you can be a problem solver. Yes. When you were born, you became a solution to God's problem. What is God's problem? God only has one problem. He's willing that none should perish, that all should come to repentance. He's got one problem, that the church wakes up to its purpose. Who is the church? That you awaken. The devil doesn't care if you went to church or mass 20 times a day. He doesn't care if where you go, how much you go, how... Let me tell you what worries him is when the church starts to get an identity of who they are in Christ and the authority they have in Christ. And, and, and when they start getting those miracles coming out of their mouth, declaring some things, believing some things, listening to the Holy Spirit, praying. Why do you think you fall asleep every time you go to pray? Devil doesn't want you to pray. Do anything. Man, you, you want to get some text messages and emails really quick? Just sit down to pray and talk to God. That, that machine's going to light up like the 4th of July. Go, go, go. Because the enemy, he's the, he's the king of distraction. And you, you're going to do this and, uh, uh, you're, you're, oh, I'm going to go to church. It's like, oh, I got a headache. Oh, my kid's called. Oh, I can't do that. No, 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 no. You are as strong of a believer as your holy habits are. You're only as strong as those holy spiritual disciplines that hold you. When we used to have a rare vacation as a family, we never, we were on the road over 300 days a year. We didn't really take vacations, but we would go maybe once a year. Dad would take us away. We'd do something at a church on Sunday morning. And boy, did I kick and scream when I was a teenager. Just like my teenagers did when they said, my... I did the same thing to my parents. I'm tired. We've been in church a week. I don't want to go to church. Uh -huh. It's a discipline. I'm going to be in God's house with God's people. I'm not going to be lazy. I'm not going to be a lazy soldier. I'm going to gather with the family of God. I'm going to gather. Because the devil would love nothing more. He's trying right now to shut down every church in America. Where do you think that brilliant idea came up from? Would it be God that says, everybody sit down, put a thing over your mouth and don't meet together? Oh, I don't think so. No, no, no. It's the enemy. So we got to gather because why? We solve problems when we get together. You should have seen this place yesterday. 70 volunteers serving, working together, working together to feed people. I had calls all week, people going, man, you're having that pantry, are you? And I know that tone in people's voice. They needed that food. If the enemy can keep us divided, he wins. United, we rise. Got to get together. Got to work together. I said this on my Living by Faith broadcast this week, and it's an anointed word. You can use it anytime you want to. Everybody, an active part of the body of Christ. Everybody, an active part of the body of Christ. I don't care if your name's on the roll. I need you active. Young Joseph, he just started coming to our church a couple weeks ago. He's 24. How old are you? You're, oh. He's 19 years old, and he's called to ministry. So he told me, what, okay, I'm a chief prop. What do you want to do, Joseph? Okay, he told me, I'm going to be in ministry. I went, okay, well, do you want to be mentored, coached, and trained? Absolutely. He's here. So what's he doing? I, I'm, an, I'm on the piano. I have no hands. I'm using both hands. I'm like, get up here, Joseph. Why? Because I'm activating him in ministry. 
get up here, pray. And he's like, uh, yes, right now, take my mic and pray. Stop pretending. This is the time. This is an exciting time to be alive. It's an exciting time to be a church, a true church that believes in the power of God. Our nation needs it. Your, your, your neighbors need it. People need it. My heart broke when I got a text message from a friend of the house. She's not here this morning. She sent me a text two days ago. She said, Londa, pray for my friend. Her son, 24-year-old son, just hung himself and committed suicide. Hopelessness is everywhere. I like people who solve problems. You're alive to solve God's problem. Because God lives where you live because God lives in you. Hey, hey, did God go anywhere where people weren't healed and set free and encouraged? No. Everywhere he went. So everywhere you go, you carry God with you. You carry the presence of another world everywhere you walk. When I walk in a door, I'm going to solve a problem. I'm there to bless somebody, to encourage somebody, to give a word to somebody. I am there to bring Jesus on the scene. When you walk around living like that, man, it's fun to get up in the morning. If you don't have that mindset, life's pretty boring. Just making it from one doctor visit to the next, barely making it from one paycheck to the next. Ooh, no, 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 no. This is not the more than abundant life God has planned for you. God wants you to thrive. And when you connect with his purpose, see that little thing? She's talking about an extension. I, I feel like I'm moving to Bismarck. You know why? Because my sister's moving to Bismarck. And we're planting a church together in Bismarck. And so there's that extension. Are you God's extension? To your building, to your block, to your family. Whoo! I haven't got to note one yet. See what I told you? I knew I was just going to be off in my world today. And Jack's ready, man. He's a Bible teacher. Jack's ready. He's been ready for, he's like, give it to me, Londa. I'm ready to write. And then he, he looks down. He thinks I'm going there. Oh, no, she's going on here. <laughs> You're cute to watch, Jack. I can always tell the teachers in the house that fivefold. I can always tell the teachers. They're the ones calling me because I missed the last point. All right, let's begin. Are you ready to begin? That was just my introduction, folks. Now I'm going to begin my message. Here we go. Number one, God will tell you stuff when you talk to him in prayer. That's a heavy theological statement, isn't it? Why? Because we just read it. Call on me and I will answer you. I happen to like when people answer their phones. <laughs> Sally does too. Oh, we got her stirred up. Wow. She's going, she's going, settle her down, Sam. Just tap on, just settle her down. <laughs> hey, guess who, guess who fell the same way as you? My father, Lowell Lundstrom. He always had the two ring rule. If, if it's church or at the home, if we didn't answer within the second ring, he was on us like white on rice. And when people answer their phone now in business, it's like, I don't even know what to do. And I'm just like, thank you for answering the phone. Don't you just want to talk to somebody? Yeah. Well, guess what? When you call on God, he's going to pick up the phone. Yeah, right. I will answer you. Yes. Who? I like it. No prayer, no communication. No prayer, no power. There's your writing. No prayer, no communication. No prayer, no power. What is the number one breakdown of all relationships in the world? Communication. communication. It's the same in your marriage. It's the same in your family. Brent always gets on me. He, he loves me so much. I, he's been out of town visiting his daughter, and I think they might be watching today. So hi, Shalastar, Star, Leroy, Leaston, my grandson, and my sweet husband. He's coming home tonight. But he always tells me, Londa, don't just text. Pick up the phone and call them. I tend to kind of like to do quick. and I don't wanna get them. He's like, Londa, call them. Just pick up the phone. He's always right. I just hate 
I can say that because he's not here. But. <laughs> and then, it, you know, it always goes good, and we work it. It's all good. And then he's like, he kind of gives me that little look like, hmm. He doesn't say, I told you so, but he sure looks, I told you so. <laughs> Call on me and I will answer you. Leonard Ravenhill is a mighty man of prayer. He's written so many, wrote so many incredible books. Here's a few quotes. A man who is intimate with God is not intimidated by man. If you deal with, um, if you're someone that deals with insecurity, self-worth, shame. You can read every self-help book at Barnes & Noble. It won't do a thing for you. Get alone with God. Let God shift you. Let God shift you in your soul, in your spirit to understand how important you are. And you'll never be intimidated by man again. Ever again. Here's another quote. No man is greater than his prayer life. You want to be great in the kingdom? Become a great prayer. Pastor Brenda, we were talking in the prayer room before church, and we were just thinking about it. She was saying, like, the, that gift of evangelism has kind of jumped on them, uh, you know, since being a part. And then the, that prayer and intercession has made me better, made us better. And she says, yeah, it's like we cross-pollinated. <laughs> and, and that's it. Yeah. That's the body of Christ. Yeah. See, Diane, you make me better. When you're sitting there, yes, I miss Don sitting next to you. You bet I do. But your presence makes us better. Your gifting makes this house stronger. I need you. You might need me a little bit too. That's why the devil tries to keep us away from each other. Because there's strength in numbers. When we get united, there's nothing we can't do together. I like this one. Here's another quote by Leonard Ravenhill. Now this might twist your brain a little bit, but follow me. Prayer in its highest form is agonizing soul sweat. When's the last time you cried over the Twin Cities? Literally cried and wept. Jesus wept over Jerusalem. You know, I drive down Nicollet a lot going south, you know, and you kind of come over that little crest. And there's that beautiful view of the city, and then you see the Twin Cities right there. Man, every single time I cross the bridge, isn't that, aren't we thankful for the new bridge? Who, who drove down? Did you come across the new bridge on, uh, right? Oh, that was cool. Yeah. All right, sidebar. Ah, every time I'm driving north and I see that Twin Cities, oh, I start praying in the spirit, God, you are the God of the Twin Cities. And I just declare miracles out of my mouth over the Twin Cities. God, heal our city. God, heal our leaders. God, bring truth and righteousness to, to, our, to our leaders in our state. God, bring truth and righteousness. Leaders, men and women in every office. Don't you just dare. Don't you dare just vote for the, for the just maybe the president that you want in November. Last night I said it was 79 days. That means it's 78 days away. Do your homework. Don't be a lazy soldier. You do your homework for the city council members. Right now, if you're under the sound of my voice, our, our member, our teammate, uh, James Delaney, is running for city council in Shakopee. If you live in Shakopee, he's going to get us some lawn signs here when he can do that in the beginning of September. I know you guys live in Shakopee and you know that. But if you live in Shakopee, guess who you're going to vote for for city council? James Delaney. Why? Because James Delaney is a godly, righteous man. And he's going to bring truth and strength and righteousness to that office. Don't, don't just do the top one. That you, no, 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 no. You're going to do the work of the judges, the work of, of those other ones that you, oh, never fill in. Oh, no, you're going to fill in every single dot if you're a member of this house. That's right. And if you don't know, I'll give you Carol Jacobson's number. 
and she'll tell you. Because I had a question on something in this last uh, pri primary election. And I said, what do I do here? Because I hadn't done the homework. So I'll even let you off the hook. If you're not sure, hey, I wrote this on a Facebook post. This is really simple, y'all. Just, just find out what the party or the person stands for. And then open up your Bible and just vote for the person that's closest. Closest. That's all. This is not brain surgery. And I'm always going to be a preacher, just like my daddy was, that talks about voting. Do you know that in America, there was hardly a small percentage of churches that will even mention the election? What, are Christians supposed to stay out of that? No, we're to occupy every area, every industry, every place in the world. Believers, pray, vote your voice, vote the Bible, vote the Bible, vote, do the work, but vote, use your voice. It's not okay. Pastor Brenda, how many, how many millions of Christians did not vote in the last uh, election? Come on, Wednesday night people. He just gave us this. I don't want to misquote him. 30 million e e Christians did not vote in the 2016 election. Is that correct? Thank you, Tom Bricko. Is that okay? No. I'm going to get stirred up like Sally. Hold me down. Hold me down. Hey, hey. We are the solution to God's problem. I like people that know that. And aren't afraid to go into any domain. Any domain. God's here. We're going to get some stuff done. We're going to solve some problems. That's what good soldiers do. They win battles. And they solve problems. If that's not what you're doing, start doing it. Mm. Prayerlessness. You can start writing now, teachers. Prayerlessness is disobedience. For God's command is that men ought always to pray and not faint. Luke 18, 1. Then Jesus told his disciples a par parable to show them that, listen, that they should always pray and not give up. If you, can, if you can drive and chew gum, you can drive and pray. If you can, I, I can pray. I'm having conversations with people all the time. And at the very same time, I'm talking to the Holy Spirit inside. Holy Spirit, what am I supposed to say here? Do you want me to bind? Do you want me to loose? Do you want me to encourage? Do you want me to cry with them? Do you want me to cast the devil out of them? What do you want me to do? I'm having a full-on conversation with you, and at the same time, I'm listening. I'm praying in my spirit. God, what do you want me to do? Do I speak? Do I not speak? Do I stand up? Do I sit down? Are you following me? This is life in the spirit. But you gotta be, you got to have that access to the spirit. Which means you need to be filled with the Spirit. The world does not need any more of Londa Ramsey, but the God needs God, the world needs a lot of God working in and through Londa Ramsey. And through Joseph and through Steve and through Bob and through Laura and through Jack and through John and through Joe and through every one of you. Solve some problems. Now, how are you gonna do that? Well, here's our verse. Call to me and I will answer you and show you little and small things. Call to me and I will answer you. And when I feel like it, when I'm in a good mood, I might talk to you. Call to me and I will answer you. And, and when you go to Bible school for four years and when you get your doctorate after that, then you can do great and mighty things. Uh -uh. Call to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things. Number two, God will show you important and big solutions to solve life's challenges. Big solutions to your dreams. Big solutions to your challenges. Big solutions to your unanswered prayer. Hey, this life with God and the kingdom is not a little thing. It's a big thing. And he needs people that are dreaming big, thinking big, loving big, blessing big. Big, big, big. Yes. Big, big, big. The devil makes you want to feel small, small, small. I'm insignificant. Nobody knows. Nobody will know if I don't vote. Nobody will care if I don't go to church. Oh, nobody will care. I, little, little, little. 
I want to bust you out of your little today. I want to bust you out of your little today. God wants you to dream big things. He wants to give you ideas for businesses. He wants to give you ideas to to add to your economy. He wants to show you ways to improve at your job, to get the promotion at your work. He wants to show you great and creative ways to reach people, to tap into those gifts that he's given inside of you. Oh, man, I love to cook, but how do I use that for God? Well, come to show. You can cook for me. I'm looking at Elizabeth Key and Bridget Pond, and they do cook for me. And guess what? I got some love today. I got some love today. Carol Bricko walked up to me, and she gave me some pickle blessing. She has a garden that is out of heaven itself. And the other day, she gave me a jar of pickles, of her homemade pickles. And I kind of feel like I'm like got drugs or something. Like (laughs) I don't want anybody to see me. I sort of like curl it up and take it in my office. I don't even want my family to see me. This is my pickles, (laughs) my pickles. So (laughs) I texted her. I texted her. I went yesterday, the day before, and I said, Carol, I just sat sat down and ate your entire jar of pickles. (laughs) Oh yeah. My whole life, I ate the whole jar. Mom would say as a little kid, I would get a, the big jar. Not the Sam's Club jar, but, you know, the big jar that you buy at a store. Yeah. I'd eat the whole thing. <laughs> Proud of it. <laughs> hey, if you're going to have a habit, you might as well have a pickle habit. <laughs> so today I come around the corner, and there is Carol. She goes, I love you, Londa. And I'm like, oh. She goes, she goes, you know, I just did these, so you might want to let them sit for a couple of days. And then she goes, well, if you can do that. I went, well, that's a big if. I don't know if they're going to make it back home from church. This is not in my notes. Where on, the, on earth? Where am I at? Oh, I know where I'm at, Jack. Teachers, keep the student on track. Hey, God will show you important and big solutions to solve life's challenges. A little over two years ago, we had a big challenge. We had a big problem. We call it one mile to a miracle. We were sitting over at the Burnsville High School, and I was having a hard time looking at KJ and John Poor another Sunday, loading in so many of you, faithful, faithful, loading in, loading out. I'm like, Jesus, can we please be done with this? God, we, I, I can't do another winter. I just can't do it. Lord, we need a building. We need our own space. We're praying. Our, our board, our elders, our team, we're praying. We're praying. We're praying. Well now, well, now we'll tell you who's the more spiritual of the two. And guess who's praying over at Gateway? Pastor Brenda and Scott are praying. And, and she goes, yeah, she's been watching on Facebook. And she goes, wow, yeah, Londa's over there. I wonder if they need space. I don't know. Well, let's call. So in, let me say it again, in prayer, God showed Brenda a solution to not just their challenge, but to our challenge. And we got together and God wins. God wants to show you how to win. Are you tired of losing? Are you sick to death of just barely getting by? God wants to show you how to win. How's he going to show you? You got to talk to him and then you got to keep the little, you got to zip the lip so you can listen. Because he can't tell you nothing if all you do is talk when you pray. It's called meditation. It's like, Lord, I I, I lay this, I I got challenges. I'll tell you them if you'd like. But... (laughs) What? Then we'll both jump off a cliff together? Who cares? Life is full of challenges. We're not in heaven yet. They're not going to stop. Newsflash. It's not like the challenges and the tests and the trials are going to stop. Why? Because the word says that's what's going to happen. So what's going to adjust? Your mind or reality? You've got to adjust your mind. 
Adjust your thoughts. Hey, I'm going to learn to be a good soldier in the battle. I'm going to learn to be a good soldier in the persecution. I'm going to learn to be a good soldier through the trials and difficulties and plagues and pandemics and blah, 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 blah. You've got to just make up your mind that you'll never quit. I know about not quitting. I know about wanting to quit. Maybe you do too. Maybe you've wanted to quit life. Maybe you've wanted to quit your your marriage. Maybe you've wanted to quit church. Maybe you've wanted to quit God. But you didn't quit. Here you sit. You didn't quit. Here you sit. (laughs) You're successful just because you showed up at church today. This is a holy habit that will hold you and build your life. Because we're better together. Big things. God wants to solve your challenges because why? We like people who solve things, right? He's the ultimate CPS, chief problem solver. Be a CPS on his behalf. Walk around, look for a problem, fix it. I can go off on that, wow. Number three. You need to get for yourself what God knows. You need to get for yourself what God knows. Does God have the answers to your problems? Okay, you're right. He has the answers. He has the solutions. The disconnect is not God. It's you. So God has the solutions to your problems. What you have to do is call and he'll talk. He's going to show you big and mighty things. And then you have to do what he tells you. Oh, I wish God would show me. Well, were you obedient to the last thing he showed you? Are you following me? You might want to circle back and check if you were obedient to the last thing he told you to do that you didn't like him telling you to do that so you didn't do it. And then you might open up your ears a little bit more. It's funny how we have selective listening. We like when he tells us stuff to do that we like to do. But we don't like when he tells us stuff to do that we don't like to do. Well, he's God and we're not. So things are going to go better for us if we just do it his way. So when he tells you to do hard things like forgive your enemies and not just forgive them but bless them. Ooh, that was a tough one for me. I got the forgiveness part, but it was hard to move into that next kingdom level of blessing my enemies. We do it. Brett and I do it all the time. We name our enemies. I have a few. And I bless them. I bless them. I name them by name and I bless them. Why? Because I need God's blessing. I want to be free. I want nothing to be in my heart or my spirit that. (sighs) Call to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you do not know yet. But he wants to show them to you. Here's your last writing. The things God wants to reveal are unsearchable. It's the Hebrew word basur. I I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. It might be incorrect. B-A-S-U-R. And it literally means inaccessible. Because they are beyond the grasp of human knowledge. That's what this word. Call me, I'll answer you, show you great and mighty things which you do not know. In other words, what you need to know is literally unaccessible in the natural realm. It's only accessible in the supernatural realm, in the things of the spirit. God wants to show you these things, but you got to live and be and be filled with the spirit to hear them and discern them and see them. Are you following me? Are you, are you quiet because you're getting this? Are you quiet because you're ready to be done having church? You're quiet because you're getting it? Okay, I'm just trying to read the room here. Trying to read the room. I can never tell if some of you are are, are sleeping or praying for me. No, 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 no. I, I feel, I feel a shift in your spirit. I feel you, I feel you're doing exactly what we declared at the front of this service. Lean forward, get this, get this shift because you got some challenges and you need answers. I want you to stand to your feet right now, please. Stand to your feet right now. They're at home in here, every head bowed, every eye closed. Have you given Jesus your heart? Have you given him all of you? Not just some of you, but all of you. Every head bowed, every eye closed. If you were to die today, tomorrow, 
Are you sure your heart is right with God? If you're absolutely sure, not hope so, I, I think so, but I know so. If you're sure, raise your right hand. You're absolutely sure your heart is right with God. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Put your hands down. I'm going to give an opportunity. If you would say, Pastor Londa, I don't know for sure that my heart is right with God. I'm doing stuff I know I shouldn't be. I need to clean. I need to get right with God. I need to him to forgive my sins. I want you on the count of three to raise your hand right where you are. One, two, three. Raise your right hand right where you are. I see one hand raised. I see your hand. I see your hand. I see your hand. I see your hand. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, I want you to do something bold. Look at me. Do something bold. Old. Get out from your seat and come and meet me right here at the front. We're going to say a simple miracle prayer together right now. Let's go. Come on. Come on. Give your, come on. Let's clap. Let's clap. These are people coming. Yes. Tiffany right here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, Ashley right here. Amen. 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 Stand right here. Amen. Amen. Come on, counselors. Come behind. Put your hands. Extend them towards these two beautiful ladies. Pray this simple miracle prayer after me. God is so good. And this is a reset day. It's a day to get right with God and move on. He, he wants you to win. And this is the first best decision you'll ever make. Let's pray together. Say, Heavenly Father, I love you. Come into my heart and life. I want to win. I want to be right with you. I repent of my sins. Forgive me, God. I want to do it your way. Heal my heart. Make me new. Oh, thank you, Jesus. God's doing some work right here, right here. God's doing work right here. Right here, right here, right here, right here. Come here, come here. I want to hug you. Come here, come here. Tears are good. Tears are good. Tears are good. Tears are good. God's healing some emotions right here. God's healing some wounds, some hurts, 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 wounds. God's healing some wounds and hurts. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. I anoint you both. Listen, I don't know what's going on, but I just feel the Holy Spirit. I anoint you. Listen, look at me. I'm going to tell you both. I'm going to anoint you with a good forgetter. I want you to forget all of that hurt and pain from the past. I want you to forget, forget. God's going to help you forget and heal your heart. Heal you. Heal you of that trauma. Okay? Heal you. Heal you of that trauma. Heal you. Be healed now in Jesus' name. Go from this place. You are not that. You are not back there. You're brand new today. You are brand new. Brand new. Brand new. Ashley, brand new. Brand new. Brand new, Tiffany. Never the same again. Amen. Now, you guys, would you please take these 200 ladies? I want you to minister to them for a few minutes and get their information. Go right this way. Give them a big hand. God did something great in them. They'll be right there. I love you. Amen. Come on, rejoice. Rejoice. There's joy in the house. Joy in the house. Joy in the house. Healing in the house. Freedom in the house. Are you glad you came to church today? I told you at the beginning, are you expecting something great from God today? Whatever God spoke to you now, you take it, keep going from here, and we're going to meet together again. I want to bless you now. Receive the blessing of the Lord as I close. The Lord bless you and keep you and make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. May you know that the God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob has not given you a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and a sound mind. Leave this place now and be the church and do the word as you are salt and light. Go forth as God's personal CPS chief problem solver. Go forth to be his light. Go forth to be his love. Go forth to bless. Go forth to live. Go forth and be filled with the power and the spirit of God. Angels, keep us safe till we meet again. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And amen. And amen. God bless you all.